Hello, Kelly Washington, are you there? Oh, uh, uh, oh, let's see, I am the host. Hmm, I do not have streaming privileges. I do have breakout rooms. Interesting. Can anyone hear PBB? We can hear you now. So, so John, did you request to be added? And all they got to do is just go in and click something or does he need more No, he has to actually give me privileges. And but my Facebook and is And that's like making you an administrator on the page? I yeah, am not and an then he can cancel it later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, or he may have to make BJ and then Yeah, that, that might be easier. Who is yeah, the have original? Yeah, make BJ because BJ owns this license. Yeah. BJ, do you see a three dots to the right of uh, reactions on the bottom of your bar? Three dots to the right. Nope, I see reactions and then leave meeting. Hmm. Hmm. I actually, I, I believe that you did not turn on live streaming. So I think there's a switch you have to turn on. I don't see it. So, uh, oh, uh, but wait, I think I can live stream a portion of this. So I'm going to get one more thing. So BJ, uh, what's a what's an access page that we can live stream to? Let me check. Go, oh, I got Africa Town. And can I post? Let's see. Photo oh, posts. Yeah, I cannot post on Africa Town. Um, Curtis, it, it's the black dot page. A, a post, a place that I can post. I'm gonna look. Yeah, is there a specific reason for the Africa Town? Uh, they just had can. a larger audience. He wants the Africa town because it has the larger audience. Yeah. yeah. Blocked out. I don't have uh, I don't have live privileges. Mm -hmm. So here's yeah. what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually uh, broadcast it on my page and then you guys can start That's tagging fine. it. That's fine. So I'm going to put it here in the in the stream. We're almost ready to go at 601. Thank you so much. We welcome uh, everybody. Please type your name and email address in the chat so that any information that we pass out after this presentation, you will actually receive. So at the bottom, there says a chat box. You can just type your name and email address and that way we can send you out any information that comes out after this call, including the presentation. Thank you so much, Jennifer Ness. Together, we're going to do this. When you welcome up anybody else that's in, and let's see. Oh, I have to reverse camera on this side. So let me think about where I can put this camera. There we go. Perfect. So let's do this. Uh, we're going to begin, and I know a lot of other people are going to go ahead and call in. It is 6.02. My name is John Chen. I, I'm the CEO of Geoteaming, and I'm here to help out with this live cast. Uh, thank you so much for coming to this Surviving the COVID-19 Crisis. If I just have to say the word unprecedented one more time, uh, as a small business owner, I just might go crazy. So instead, I'm just going to hand it over to the uh, main person here, Curtis Calhoun, from Black Dot Underground. I've been to the Black Dot place, it's amazing. Curtis, thank you and welcome. Thank you, can you pull those slides up for me, John? Uh, yes, I can do that, hold on one second. Okay, welcome everybody, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, normally in a uh, room full of people, I would say we know there's other places you could have been. We thank you for being here, but obviously tonight that's not the case. Um, but uh, I'm Curtis Calhoun, a project manager with Black Dot, uh, or project manager with Africa Town Preservation and Development Association, as well as a community manager at Black Dot, our shared co-working space and economic hub. And then uh, I also have a company called Curtis Calhoun LLC, which is a coaching uh, practice. Uh, tonight we are here for the uh, COVID, surviving the COVID crisis. Uh, how to what your small business can do. Uh, the agenda. Can you pull up the next slide? Um, Thank you, sir. Just say next slide and I'll take care of you. Okay. 
Next slide. There you go. Okay, so we're gonna cover the agenda real quick. Uh, local COVID resources will be covered by Heidi Hall of the City of Seattle Office of Economic Development. Uh, federal resources will be covered by Jennifer Ness Tucker of the Washington Small Business Development Center. Uh, operational steps to manage through the crisis will be covered by BJ Stewart of Urban Impact. And then at the end, I will walk you through a short action plan that you can walk away with something tangible that you can use today to help you in your business and um, to help stave off this crisis. Next uh, slide. Here you go. Like Jennifer, Jennifer Ness said at the beginning, we have the chat box at the bottom. It's right there at the, kind of in the middle of your screen at the bottom. We would like for everybody to please put your name, uh, your email address, and if you're comfortable, your phone number. That way, uh, any of the partners that uh, here can put you on their email list. You will get updates for the community activities that are going on and an update on resources that will be coming out. Uh, I would like to mention at this time, our community partners, uh, we have um, Black Dot Underground, which is a shared co-working space in the Central District, Africatown Central District, which is an initiative that was started about six years ago to help stop gentrification in the Central District. We have Urban Impact, the host of the Sharks at the Beach. Uh, we have Central Area Collaborative. We have the Washington Small Business Development Center. We have the City of Seattle Office of Economic Development. And we also have Ventures, which is a small uh, entrepreneur uh, assistance program. So with that being said, tonight's key objectives is to help inform entrepreneurs of the available resources and empower you to be able to activate around surrounding COVID crisis. Uh, we want to be able to provide you uh, access to these resources, places where you can find them, the updates that are taking place, as well as some technical assistance possibly uh, in helping you get these things uh, taken care of and filled out for your business. Um, next slide, John. There you go. Now, this is the action plan. We're going to cover this at the end. Uh, it's real brief. And what we want you to do is be able to put down some action items. Who in your company uh, can be able to execute those action items and what due date you want those action items done by. So we're going to break out at the end into small groups. We're going to have a chance to maybe fill out three or four of these uh, and then talk, probably prioritize them and then talk with the group about which one you would like to activate, maybe get some feedback and then take turns in the group doing the same thing. Uh, you will have this slide again at the end uh, and you'll be able to do that there. So with that, Heidi, are you ready to come on board? I'm ready. Okay, up to bat first, we have Heidi Hall, the Seattle City of Seattle Economic Office of Economic Development, and she's gonna be going over local resources that you can tap into and that uh, benefit from for your small businesses. Great, thank you, Curtis, and thank you, everyone. I assume you can hear me okay. If not, please raise your hand and let me know. Um, so thank you again. My name is Heidi Hall. I'm with the Seattle Office of Economic Development. I uh, thank you so much for letting me be here tonight with you. I manage our uh, neighborhood business district work through the Only in Seattle program. So we work closely, actually, with a lot of our neighborhood business districts, including um, you know, Africatown, the Central Area Collaborative, BJ in uh, Southeast Seattle. So really, really value the partnership that we have with you all and the work that you're doing in your communities to help businesses get information and access resources. Those relationships that you bring and the connections are really critical to making sure all of our businesses get the information they need, especially those that might have more barriers to accessing resources. Um, I think everyone said it already, our small business community has been really impacted. Um, I wanna see if we could pull, are the slides up? They will be in just a second, Heidi. Perfect, okay. Um, so, you know, everyone said it already, small businesses have been deeply impacted by what's been coming on and, and happening. And we're obviously thinking of how to help businesses get through this crisis, but then also what does it look like as we move forward? So really excited about the conversation you all are having um, tonight. So I'll just start with a couple of, a, a quick recap of some immediate steps that the city took to provide um, relief for small businesses. I'll go through the first four of these in a little more detail in the next slides. Um, and then I'll call out the, the mayor actually appointed former Governor Gary Locke and former Council President Bruce Harrell to lead a COVID-19 small business recovery task force. So that is getting off the ground and there'll be more to come on that to advise on long-term policy recommendations. 
Um, and then there was also a temporary moratorium announced in mid-March for uh, nonprofit, I'm sorry, for commercial, including nonprofit evictions. So the city would not enforce evictions uh, for 60 days or until the crisis is over. Um, so the, and small businesses and nonprofits are encouraged to work out payment plans uh, with the landlord. So wanted to flag that. Uh, next slide. And so a couple of things to know, uh, the business and occupancy tax, there is a deferral on payments there for small businesses. Uh, you have to request that deferral. So there's the email and phone number there. And also utility relief for any customers, so that includes business and residential that have been impacted by COVID-19, you can apply for the utility discount program. And that is available for everybody. So something that may be relevant for some of you or folks in your community as well. Next slide. And then one of the big things that the city did uh, right away was a, a major expansion of the Small Business Stabilization Fund. This was launched last year to support business owners that um, had impacted, had, had experienced a destabilizing event. So this was expanded dramatically with $2.5 million. The first round closed March 25th. It provided grants of up to $10,000 for working capital. It focused on low moderate income business owners, those with five or fewer employees and businesses that had a physical establishment in Seattle, which meant that they depended on pedestrian traffic. So that was, you know, storefronts, food trucks, um, so on. So physical establishment. Those uh, grantees were a first round of awardees, 250 were announced yesterday. We do anticipate additional rounds as funding is secured. So I will be sure to pass that information along. Um, I often get questions if you applied in the first round and were not selected for an award, then you are still in the running for the next rounds as funding becomes available. So more to come there. Um, next, seeing some questions. Okay, and I guess um, if someone, feel free to flag if there's questions that come up, it's hard to track the chat and um, talk. <laughs> so feel free to grab me if there's any questions. Um, I'll keep track of the, the chat for you, okay? Perfect, thank you. I was trying to grab it and we'll, we'll definitely have some time too at the end. Um, I know a lot of people have seen some of this information, so I'll, I'll kind of go over it a little more high level and if there's specific questions, definitely um, be sure to, to ask those. Um, so the CARES Act is the federal stimulation um, package that passed March 27th. And I think Jennifer Ness is gonna talk in a little more detail around this about some of the small business resources that came through that. So I'll just yeah. uh, touch on the kind of stuff related more to unemployment. Um, and in addition, there was the cash payment that folks have read about. And a couple of key pieces around unemployment with um, expanding the $600 a week and additional weeks of unemployment, and then a new category to support some of our freelancers and gig workers. So I'll talk about that in a little more detail. Next slide. So we will get a lot more detail about the, so a lot of the uh, federal support for small businesses is being routed through the Small Business Administration. So a lot of important stuff there that we'll hear about in more detail. What I did want to provide um, information about is uh, the Office of Economic Development has a staff team that has been trained and is providing technical assistance for uh, individual businesses and nonprofits that are have questions about these resources or need help uh, developing an application. So there is, you know, anyone can call our office or email the office and get that direct technical assistance. And then our team's also tracking some of the changes as the programs evolve and new guidance comes out as well. Um, and then in addition with that, there is, so that launched last week, so that is live now. Uh, we also have language line access for businesses that need uh, interpretation support. So that is available, that can be asked. And then we're also working really closely with our neighborhood business district partners, you know, folks like Urban Impact and Africatown and Black Dot and the Central Area Collaborative and, you know, all the other ones across the city, as well as a number of community-based organizations that are doing outreach and touching small businesses in different communities to um, 
to make sure that they've got information as they're reaching out to their small businesses in their neighborhoods who they may have relationships with or uh, would prefer to work with their partner. We are um, building on our partnership with the Department of Neighborhoods to orient and train a group of community liaisons, they're called, which, who do in-language outreach to business owners that may not be um, as readily um, able to access some of the mainstream information sources. And so they're doing outreach in language to a lot of those business owners as well. So those are some of the pieces we've gotten online over the last couple of weeks and um, have also been partnering with one of our workforce development partners to help provide information about some of the changing um, rules and new emergency you know, uh, regulations that are coming through around the unemployment benefits. Next slide. So I'll highlight a couple of other efforts that are underway kind of locally. Um, first off is um, the Seattle Department of Transportation launched, you know, as businesses, as restaurants had to close and there was a focus on trying to support takeout and delivery options for a lot of our local restaurants, they did um, implement some curbside pickup locations to support that effort. So they looked initially at places where there were a lot of restaurants and where parking demand had declined. And then folks can also uh, request and suggest locations as well. Um, our office is organizing a weekly small business webinar to provide updates on small business resources, provide access to um, some of the, the government officials that are working on programs, uh, and an opportunity to answer questions. So that's every day, that's, I'm sorry, every week, Wednesdays at 11 a.m. And there's a link here to register. Um, I believe it's not going to happen tomorrow, though, <laughs> now that I said that. So every other week. Um, there is a lot of, there's some efforts out of the mayor's office in partnership with OED to support small businesses that are open. So they've got a support small biz uh, social media campaign, as well as a map that lists all the businesses that are open for takeout and delivery across the city. Um, and then all of these resources are actually logged. Um, if you go to seattle.gov, the first page has a link to community resources in response to COVID-19. So those are all listed um, at that link there at the bottom of the page. Okay, next page, or next slide, sorry. Oops, back one. <laughs> so a couple of other things I'll flag when we get back to one more slide. Um, there are a number of folks working in the creative and creative business industry. So if we could go back two slides. Um, there's a number of resources out there. We should be on the one that says other efforts, Whip Smart. So there's a number of, Whip Smart is an organization that has a document they've put together specific for resources around uh, creative businesses and creative professionals. So that may be relevant to some of you on the call or some of the, the community members that you're working with. Um, there's also a, and that's kind of a wide swath of folks like artists, musicians, writers, uh, freelancers of all sorts. They have some resources specific to um, uh, POC and LGBTQ artists as well. Um, the Plate Fund was launched last week, actually, by, um, it's an initiative to provide immediate financial assistance for restaurant workers who we know have been just absolutely devastated by the closure of our restaurants. Um, so they're eligible to receive $500 in immediate assistance. And so there's the link there to apply. Um, also wanted to flag uh, our office, OED, in, co in collaboration with other regional um, bodies in the chamber, are, have been working on an effort to capture the economic impacts from this COVID-19 crisis. And that's going to be important to, to really inform policy as this moves forward and we think about recovery and also to access federal and state resources that become available to be able to document some of that impact. Uh, so there was a survey that was out for two weeks. They got about 5,000 responses, and there will be a high-level summary of the things that were learned um, that I can share with you, I think probably tomorrow or later in the week. And there will be another survey that comes out, uh, I think, in another week or two. So this will be kind of an ongoing effort to, to be tracking that. And I know we worked with a couple of, of folks in the neighborhoods that were also tracking some of the impacts on your neighborhood businesses as well. So feel free to forward those efforts to me. Um, and then I just wanted to flag also that, yeah, 
that there's a number of um, community specific funds that have been launched. So for example, in Chinatown ID, they had a private fund to support restaurants. Um, Pioneer, uh, there's been a Seattle, the Seattle Sounders Ray Foundation just launched something to support businesses in um, Chinatown ID, Pioneer Square and Soto. There's a fund that was just launched in Southeast Seattle um, that HomeSite is taking the lead on. Um, so there's a number, and that's in no way a, a comprehensive list. So I just want to flag there are a number of these kind of community specific efforts that are popping up as well to support small businesses. Is there a question? John, there's a question from Jennifer Ness about how to get on the list of open businesses. Can you help with that? Yeah, so if you go to um, that may, the web page I told you, the seattle.gov, and click on Community Resources for COVID-19, if you click on Business Support, it's one of the first links on, the, on that section. And anyone can... Um, can, there, there's a survey that anyone can, can input a business. So if you know of a business or if a business restaurant owner can put themselves in that map as well. And if you have any trouble, just, just reach out to me. Thank you. And also I wanna flag the Southeast Seattle Business Associations actually just launched an effort um, focused on South Seattle. So it's South Seattle's open for business. And it's essentialseattle.com. And so all of those businesses that they have on that map have been uploaded to the city map as well. So there was an effort to tap into some of the community lists that were being generated. Okay, next slide. Okay, <laughs> unfortunately it was a presentation from last week. So I think on Tuesday afternoon, Washington State announced their small business emergency grants. And as of Thursday, it was oversubscribed for King County. So it just goes to show the real uh, need out there and how challenging it is with some of these resources. Um, so next next slide. So we'll continue to monitor this if there's anything else that becomes available. Um, and I wanted to flag, um, BJ had asked me to also talk about some state resources. So I am not an expert in this space, but have been working really closely with our partners. So I wanted to flag a couple of things that are relevant to you as business owners for yourself or your employees or potentially your community members that you're working with as well. There are a lot of new um, eligibility and emergency rules that have come out in response to COVID-19. Um, and so this link here is the best place to stay up to date on that information. Um, the, I'll be honest with you, the Employment Security Department, it's a state agency, they have been absolutely slammed. So it's really, it does require patience and time on the phone and time on the website and I know it's really frustrating for folks that desperately need resources. So, so that, that is a real challenge and I just want to acknowledge that. Um, and I know they're trying to staff up, um, but that, that will be a little bit of a challenge. Um, information is changing, so definitely stay there to stay up to date. Um, the next slide. So I will flag a couple of programs that might be good to know about if you don't know already that are relevant to employers. Um, shared work is a program that in, allows employers to reduce the hours of employees by as much as 50%. And then the employees can collect partial unemployment benefits to replace that portion of their lost wages. So folks have had, because of loss of business, have had to scale back. This is an option. Uh, the employee will sign up for unemployment and the employer would receive a letter. So they would confirm that that is, you know, they kind of opt into the program. Uh, standby is another program where uh, say you're a restaurant and you've had to close because of the state mandate around um, closing restaurants and bars, you, you, you might temporarily lay off your workers because of lack of work, but your intent is to hire them back on as business returns. And so you can put them on standby and they don't have to be looking for work. Um, and then new in the CARES Act I wanted to highlight is this pandemic unemployment assistance category. This is a temporary category to help cover people who were previously not eligible for unemployment benefits. So that includes, in particular, our independent contractors, um, freelancers, our gig workers, our Uber Lyft drivers. So there's a whole category of people that were not eligible for unemployment and who are now going to be eligible. Um, they, and of course, there's nuances in everyone's situation and all that, so you have to actually go through the process to, to, 
to confirm that you qualify. Um, they, the ESD, the state system was not set up for this. And so they're getting ready to launch that. I think I just heard this weekend. So that is gonna be something in the weeks to come that will be available now that they've gotten their system um, up to date. Um, and I think that's the main thing. I'll kind of leave it there. It's a lot of information. Um, like I said, we are here to support in any way that we can. We know our businesses are going through so much and really trying to, again, support access to those federal resources that are available that Jenna Finesse will talk through in more detail as well as identifying other grant and, and resources and really having a focus on our business owners that may not speak English, may have barriers because of technology, or may need more direct assistance to access those resources. So we are available and um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you. Yeah, Heidi, let me grab my microphone. Okay. So we do have some time for questions for Heidi. So if you would like to ask a question, either raise your hand or unmute your mic and say your name. Let's go to BJ who has a commentary. Go ahead, BJ. Hello, Heidi. Uh, during an earlier presentation uh, this week, or maybe last week it was, you had a uh, provided a document that had a bunch of city resources that mm -hmm. uh, that uh, was kind of a uh, updated a document that was going to be updated. Is that available mm -hmm. online as well? Yeah, um, ooh, it should be online. I do have that updated document. I will try to put the link in the chat. Um, but I will forward it to you to send to all the participants. So as part of the weekly small business webinar that I mentioned on Wednesdays, um, my colleague is actually updating a document with all the small business resources and some of the FAQ that comes up through those calls. So obviously it's growing each week, <laughs> but um, it's a good place to kind of just have everything in one place. And the, the slides from those webinars, as well as the handouts, and I believe this document is posted on OED's blog every week by Friday. So you can go to um, our homepage, which I'll, I'll post in the chat, um, and get access to that webinar if you're not able to make it on Wednesdays. And Heidi, this is John. Are you saying that the mm -hmm. slides from this presentation are also posted there? Is that correct? Um, I didn't post these, but there's some similar slides I shared with our neighborhood business districts. I can post those links. BJ, is, that, are there, is there going to be a location where we can share these slides? You have to unmute, BJ. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah. Give him the sign. Oh, yes. Uh, or as, uh, as we recommended earlier, if uh, folks, as they sign in, go into the chat room and leave their name and email, we can email you a, a link to these resources or link, uh, email the actual document. Outstanding. If you want these resources, go to the chat room and chat your email address, either to me privately or openly. Also for you on Facebook Live, if you want these resources, please just chat your email address and we will get that to you. Are there anybody else who has questions while we have a few more minutes with the amazing Heidi Hall? There were two more questions put in the chat. Go ahead, uh, Curtis. Go ahead and ask them. No, uh, okay. The first one was a uh, question. Are there any resources available specifically for the nonprofits? Oh, good. I'm glad somebody asked that. So the SBA resources, um, the Small Business Administration, kind of the loans and the, the advance and the Paycheck Protection Program, um, nonprofits are eligible for those. Private nonprofits are eligible for those as well as small businesses. Um, so Jennifer Ness can talk in more detail on what that looks like. Okay. And, and there's also a number of um, kind of foundation philanthropic resources as well. Um, so again, that um, Seattle.gov COVID-19 um, resource page look, uh, compiles a number of them for mm. specific categories, whether it's for artists or for nonprofits. I know the Seattle Foundation really led a kind of regional philanthropic effort um, with United Way. They also just announced a, in which which they're, they're funding nonprofits on the front lines, speci specifically working with um, marginalized and impacted communities. So that's that's something to consider as well. Um, there was just something announced around rental assistance through United Way King County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so just wanted to flag that as well. Again, for folks, we're you know not just business owners. You're also community members. So you um, these resources are probably relevant to everybody. And that, uh, that Seattle Foundation um, COVID-19 Resource Fund is, is currently closed for application, but you can submit your 
uh, via email, you can submit your organization, uh, organization's name and what you would use those resources for to toss your organization's name in the hat for further consideration. And it looks like uh, there's one more question. It says, uh, so applications for unemployment funds for freelancers and consultants are not up and running yet or may be available next week. Is there a firm launch date for applications asking for a friend? Yeah, I mean, this is, this is, um, I, this has been a tricky one because this is through the state agency. <laughs> so they have been messaging that that will be available as of mid April. So what I would do is go to that, and I did hear from one of our workforce development partners today that that's anticipated for um, this weekend. So I would check that, if you go to that link that I put on the page, you can sign up for updates. And so I would go there and sign up for updates, but definitely check this weekend and early next week. Um, and that's for that new pandemic unemployment assistance category, it sounds like would be relevant for, if, if I remember the question right, it was an independent contractor. Um, so that would be how, how I would approach that. And if you're having trouble, feel free to reach out and I can connect you to the right person. Um, I, again, the trick is we, through our workforce development partners, we've got information, but not a secret backdoor entrance to that state agency. <laughs> so that's, that's the ongoing challenge there. But if we can, you know, if there's any trouble about getting information, let me know. And there, there are a couple more questions, actually. Another one is, uh, are there resources for independent cleaning businesses? Yeah, so a, a business owner, um, if you know, if you're a cleaning business, and you have a business license, you'd be considered a business and eligible for these resources. So whether that's the next round of the stabilization fund or any of the direct assistance that our office can provide around accessing some of the small business administration um, loans and, and, and paycheck protection program. Okay, and then our church is eligible for the SBA stimulus fund. You know, I'm going to let Jennifer Ness answer that. My, I believe that did change, so they are eligible. But if I'm wrong, please say so. Okay. I got you. That is it for the <laughs> question so far. Yeah. Oh, and I was going to mention one thing. I know one question I've gotten is around um, interest-free loans for our Muslim business owners. And so uh, Business Impact Northwest is doing the Paycheck Protection Program um, at 30 to 50,000 is kind of what they're targeting for, um, for Muslim business owners. And so if anyone's in that situation or know someone in that situation, uh, let me know so that we can direct you to the right place and it doesn't get kind of looped into the pile. Outstanding, Heidi. Thank you so much. I Thank just want to you so much. I, uh, I want you to hang out here for this. I just want to share with you that there are over 20 people on Facebook Live and they have shared over 11 times. This message is spreading throughout the community. Here in, uh, in video land, we like to use applause. We like to use the sign language version. For those who are in camera, put your hands up. Hands up, come on, and shake your hands. This is how you applause for people using sign language. Thank you, Heidi, for your fantastic presentation. Curtis, would you like to introduce our next presenter? Our next presenter is the lovely Jennifer Ness Tucker of the Washington Small Business Development Center, and she will be sharing federal resources. I'll take it away. All right, thank you so much, Curtis. Thank you guys for um, your questions. So before I get started, let me answer the question um, that was already asked about um, faith-based organizations and nonprofits. So the answer is yes, yes, and yes. Okay, so I'm gonna share my slides and I'm gonna answer your questions. I'm gonna go rather quickly um, through my slides and then so we can get to your questions because I know that's the, the most important part of this, okay? So the federal resources that we're going to share here. Let me see. Okay, there we go. All right, so we're gonna talk about federal resources. And the thing about this is the, <laughs> Because COVID-19 just kind of snuck up on us, right? The information is changing almost by the minute. So I can't even say by the day, it's actually changing by the minute. And because of that, the information I'm giving you today probably was not the same as yesterday and it may not be the same as tomorrow. So I'm prefacing that because 
there's been information that came down the pike. I've given presentations like this, and the next day I learned that the information is no longer accurate or valid. So I wanted to make sure that you guys are aware that things are changing rapidly. Um, let me just go into the presentation. Two things I want you to leave here with, regardless of what I say, what BJ says, what Heidi says, what John says, and what um, Curtis say. Two things we want you to leave here for, with, apply and appeal. Do not disqualify yourself, okay? Thank you, John. Do not disqualify yourself. So many people are asking zillions of questions and disqualifying themselves from the resources that are out here. Listen, I have had people back, and when this first started at the beginning of March, the SBA said, oh, this is not the type of disaster that we would ever offer the economic injury disaster loan. Bam, two weeks later, guess what? They were offering the economic injury disaster loan. When they first offer it, it was like, oh, I don't think this will be available for independent contractors and gig workers like, you know, Uber drivers and Lyft drivers. Bam, it was offered to Uber and Lyft drivers and other contract workers and gig economy. So don't disqualify yourself and don't let anybody else disqualify you. Apply, apply, apply. And then once you receive that determination, because most often, you may have missed something. You may not have checked the box correctly. You may have gotten some information. They may need additional information. So they're gonna send you a determination letter. Once you receive that letter, appeal, 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 okay? Even if you get what you want, even if what they give you is desirable, still appeal because you can get additional money, okay? So I'm gonna go through the programs that are available. And if you guys have questions, please feel free to type those in the box. We have John monitoring the chat box, both on Facebook <laughs> and on Zoom. And then we also have uh, Curtis, who's also monitoring. So feel free to ask questions at any time. I am going to run through this presentation rather quickly so that I can get to, <laughs> get to your questions as soon as possible. So there are a few ways that you can um, infuse capital into your business. So there's some traditional financing and there's some disaster financing, okay? So traditionally, the SBA has loans, right? So they have the 7A loans, they have the 504 loans, they have cap loans, express loans, community advantage loans. When you get this presentation, these links are hyperlinks. So it'll take you right to the page that'll explain all of these different loans to you so that you know what you could be uh, potentially applying for, okay? Then you have your micro loan lenders. So some of us are small in, in the form of micro, like really small businesses, right? We're solopreneurs, independent contractors. So we wouldn't qualify for some of those loans anyways, otherwise, right? So you have these micro loans, these micro lenders, alternative lenders that have alternative financing. For example, I know for a fact that Evergreen Business Capital they are a CDFI, which is a Community Development Fund institution. They offer a micro loan up to $15,000 for four years at 4%. And this is even for startups. So if you're starting a business, if you're very new to business, if you haven't had any capital or if you need some capital infusion, these are the folks that you would go to, okay, on, on a regular basis and even now currently, okay? So those are the micro loans and the alternative lenders. So you have Craft3. You have Mercy Corps, you have Business Impact Northwest and Evergreen Business Capital. Now, the SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan. This I'm gonna go into in further detail, but right now I just want you guys to write down or to document where you apply for this loan, okay? So it's covid19relief.sba.gov, okay? Then also you can do personal loans. I would not recommend you doing personal loans because that is attached to you as an individual, your social security number, right? Your collateral, your personal money. So I do not recommend that. I understand that some folks in our community may not qualify for some of the rest of these things. But in this particular instance, you don't have to worry about that. I'm just giving you some other options just in case, okay? So let's move right along. Oh, I skipped this slide, hold on previous. All right, so let's talk about the economic injury disaster loan. So this loan, again, covid19relief.sba.gov. And there's a telephone number that you can call. Again, you, you're going to have these slides. You can go through, 
and follow up on things that you are interested in. So eligibility. Again, I, I want to repeat this. I was in a call this past Saturday with over 50 not faith-based organizations, nonprofit faith-based organizations from all around the world, which I thought was amazing. So nonprofits absolutely can apply for this. The exclusion for this is if you have a farm, if you are gambling, and you have some charitable um, contributions that are just specifically charitable. So for example, most churches might have a, um, a school, right? And most, most churches may have a daycare, they may teach, they may have restaurants, whatever they might have. Originally, they were excluded, but that is not the case anymore, okay? So owners of rental property. So a lot of us have rental properties that we can also qualify for this, okay? So if you have one rental property or 15 rental properties and you're used to receiving rents, for example, myself, I have a rental property in Ohio. I have it on Airbnb. As soon as COVID-19 hit and, and the, um, the Arnold Classic, we have the Arnold Classic in Columbus every year. As soon as the Arnold Classic was canceled, almost every single Airbnb reservation I had was canceled. I'm like, oh my goodness, what in the world is going on? The awesome part about that is I was able to get relief from my mortgage company. They actually sent me an email and said, hey, we know COVID-19 is going on. Do you need some assistance? Is this a hardship for you? I'm like, oh, yes, buddy, buddy, yes, okay? So that is another thing. So a couple of things I'm not going to cover here, but I just want to mention. Number one, there are so many deferments going on. There are tons of companies are deferring payments. So that could be your insurance. That could be your mortgage. That could be your rent. That could be your utilities, your credit card companies. The best thing for you to do, and I know, um, I'm sorry, I'm getting into BJ stuff. Never mind. BJ's going to go over all of that. Never mind. So let's talk about the terms and the limitations of the economic injury disaster loan. So the maximum amount you can receive is $2 million. The term is 15 or 30 years. The interest rate for for-profit is 3.75%, and for nonprofit is 2.75%. So let me just stop right there. Let me just stop right there and say this. Y'all ain't getting no loan, and I'm saying it just like that. Y'all ain't, okay? Y'all ain't getting no loan <laughs> for no 15 or 30 years from nowhere, okay? Some of our mortgages ain't even that low. So mind you, this is amazing opportunity for some small business owners, okay, boo? <laughs> so, and then in addition to that, the payment is deferred for one year. So when you get approved, you don't even have to make payments on this for one whole year, okay? The processing time, we say three to five weeks, it's taking way longer, okay? But people are getting their money. There was an article in the paper, I believe it was the New York Times, just on yesterday, Monday, talking about how much money has already been given out. So people are getting their money. It's taking a little longer. Do know that this is unprecedented times. This stuff has never happened. You know, we've never had a national declaration that actually applied to everybody. And so everybody's applying. And I'm gonna talk about some of those numbers in a moment when it comes to the PPP. But anyways, this is available until December 31st of 2020. But we do not recommend that you wait because the thing about this is, if you get approved today, you can request an increase in your loan amount in two weeks or two months or three months or five months from now. Also, it's not a good idea to wait, right? So just apply. It takes about 10 minutes, literally. On our mastermind call last Monday, we actually went through the application, literally just to show how quickly you can get through it. It's five pages, okay? And before I say anything else, it says no cost to apply. Please don't pay nobody to do this application for you. Shame on you if you do. It's five pages, 10 minutes. If you are that lazy, you don't deserve to be in business. Bottom line. Yep, I said it. I sure did. So do not pay anybody to do this loan application for you. It does not cost anything but about 10 minutes of your time and is definitely beneficial. Okay, so let's talk about some of the uses. The Economic Injury Disaster Loan, which they're, they're um, calling the EIDL, E-I-D-L, 
it cannot be used to pay down long-term debt. What they want you to use this for is for payroll, general expenses, accounts payable, lines of credits that you might have, right? Bridge loans, returns on customers' deposits. So a lot of times, especially that travel industry, they have like lost tons of money, right? People just canceling all kinds of trips, right? And so if you are in that industry, because people have canceled their trips and returns on that money, you were already banking on that money. Some of that money was already in your account and already spent, right? So you can use this money for those purposes, okay? If it is used for payroll, they want, they want you to apply for the PPP as well. We're gonna talk about the PPP in a minute. That's the Payment Protection Program, okay? Listen guys, I told you, do not disqualify yourself and don't let anyone else disqualify you. Ain't that what I said? So listen, two things I told you to do. We have a prize for the folks that can type those two things in the, in the chat box. Two things, what are they? Please take a moment to type it in the chat box. What are those two things? Facebook Live, you can get in on this now too. She said two words. Oh, uh, Abdi is the first and she said, apply, or he or she said apply. And Daryl came back with the other one, with appeal. Yes, apply and appeal, okay? So here's the thing, what I tell y'all, don't disqualify yourself. Your credit score, I know some of y'all got a 330 credit score. <laughs> that's the lowest you could go is 330. And that's okay, right? Your credit score will not disqualify you for this application. Okay? So don't disqualify yourself. Your credit score won't disqualify you. The first 25,000, they are not asking for any type of collateral. After 25,000, they want business collateral. But guess what? If you don't have it, they're not going to deny your loan. So don't disqualify yourself. If they're not disqualifying you, you definitely shouldn't be disqualifying yourself. Apply and appeal, okay? So let's talk about that $10,000 emergency advance payment. Everybody's been talking about this because it has changed so many times and we've gotten so much information. This information as of today is actually accurate, okay? So in that loan application, on the fourth page, there's a checkbox. It says, do you want to be considered for up to $10,000 in cash advance, okay? Everybody, check that box, okay? Here's what's happening with that. It's up to $10,000. It's up to 1,000 per employee, up to 10 employees, okay? So if you have seven employees, what's the maximum amount you can get? Somebody type it in the chat box for me, please. If I have seven employees- 7,000, Troy is the to, first. Thank you, Troy, I appreciate you, okay? So everybody's not gonna get $10,000, right? It's up to 10,000, which is up to 1,000 per employee, up to 10 employees. If you have 20, 20 employees, how much of the cash advance up to can you receive? Somebody type that in the chat box, please. If you have 20 employees, what's the maximum amount of the cash advance you can receive? Troy's got the fastest fingers here. He said 10,000 followed by Abdi Subdish and owner. At Absolutely. Okay. So it's just ten thousand. That's the max, and that is forgivable. That ten thousand dollars is not taxed. You don't have to pay it back. You don't have to report it on your taxes. It is ten thousand dollars. Yeah. Hold on one second. Hang on a second, Jennifer. That's something Jennifer, happened to the audio. Let's see. Let's stop the share for just a second. Uh, your audio went off. So let's see, Jennifer. Ness, uh, first, let's say uh, have you say something. Say hello. Hello. Can you? Oh. Much better. Okay. Oh, your bandwidth is low. Your your internet is having a challenge right now. Uh, oh, so man, let me get off this Facebook Live. <laughs> that's it. I got your. I got you covered on the Facebook Live. Okay. Hold on. Hey, look at that. Hey, look at you people. You broke the internet. You guys are amazing. Give yourself a round of applause. Thank you very much. Broke it. So okay. let me get off um, of this. So Jennifer Ness, as soon as I you get off your Facebook Live, you can uh, bring back your slide deck and finish up. I'm doing uh, that you, right now. Thank you. You have, uh, oh, you're lucky. You have about 15 plus minutes. Listen, guys, here's what I want you to really fully understand about this. That $10,000 is like the stimulus 
that individuals are receiving, that $1,200 or however much it's going to be, that $10,000, up to $10,000 is a stimulus for small business owners. Don't have to pay it back. Don't have to file taxes on it. And you, it's, it's a forgivable advance payment, okay? So I'm moving right along because I want to give time for the actual questions, okay? So this is how much money that's out here on these streets, okay? $247 B billion. This is as of yesterday. As of yesterday, $247 billion have been approved, okay? So know that the money is getting out on the streets. And this is through the CARES Act. This is the PPP, which I'm about to go over. I just wanted to let you know these numbers in advance of me going over it. The average loan for the PPP is $239,152. A little more than 70% of those loans are $150,000 or less, okay? Now, the thing about this PPP, guys, is it is 100% of it can be forgivable. You're not about to get this nowhere else. I don't know how to uh, say it otherwise. You ain't, y'all ain't, you not about to. I don't know how I can say this in the language that we understand it. This payment protection program is amazing okay first of all this is different so the economic injury disaster loan goes through the sba the payment protection program goes through your bank okay so this is for any existing sba lender these companies um i heard earlier today that impact um impact northwest is doing these loans most sba lenders are doing them they do have a preference right they are doing them first for their own customers before they do it for anybody outside of their bank, okay? So it provides small businesses with funds to pay up to eight weeks of payroll costs, including benefits and taxes, okay? You can also pay interest on mortgage obligations, your rent, you know, or utilities if they were established before February 15th, which is before COVID-19. So you can't just be going out here renting new property and think you're going to pay the rent on it. No, they ain't doing that, okay? <laughs> So it's for things that were established prior to February 15th, okay? So let's talk about it here. Let's look at Washington here. In Washington, there has already been 18,906 PPP loans approved, okay? And that's at $4.9 billion. That's just in Washington. Look at Oregon, right? And you can look at any of these states. Again, you guys are gonna get this presentation and this information is valid and up to date as of yesterday, okay? So this is just through April 13th yesterday, okay? So just good information for you guys to know. Even tells us which industries are getting them this money. Look at that, construction industry, 100, 114,000 of them at $33 billion, right? So they're the ones that's getting it but other industries as well. So nobody's being cut out. So just know that, okay? So here's some of the limitations. Guys, listen to me. All or a portion of these loans can be forgiven if you use it for the right purpose. Don't be going out here and buying you that new Tesla Model X, okay? That ain't got nothing to do with your payroll. <laughs> so don't use it for that. But if you use it for the things that you're supposed to use it for, 100% of it can be forgiven. I have clients that have gotten their money, right? And the thing about this particular loan though, it's the two-year loan. So if you get it, know that you have six months deferment, but those payments are gonna be due. You will hopefully get it completely forgiven, but there is a possibility that it won't be. So be mindful of that and keep good records because you want this entire portion to be forgiven, okay? So just be mindful of that. And I'll answer questions that if you have them. Again, you guys will get this slide. So if there's anything you, um, you know, that's on here that you want clarity on, ask in the chat box, okay? Independent contractors. They count as employees for the PPP. So all of us that have, um, you know, Uber and Lyft contracts, you know, shipped or all of those different things, they would qualify. This is a 1% loan for two years, okay? The cap is 10 million. We saw the average, but the cap is 10 million. 
okay? There is no prepayment penalties or fees, no collateral or personal guarantee is required. Forgiveness will not be granted if the loan proceeds are used for anything other than payroll costs, rent, utilities, mortgage interest over an eight week period, okay? So don't go doing whatever you wanna do with this money, okay? Do what you're supposed to do so you can get it forgiven and don't have to pay it back. You can't get that from anywhere else, okay? Now, this debt relief program, let me just say this. This is one of the things that a lot of people were disqualifying themselves. Well, I already have a loan with the SBA. I owe, I owe this or I owe that. Stop it. Stop it, okay? Apply and appeal. So the debt relief program says that if you do owe some other loan, you do not have to pay the interest, the principal, or the fees for six months. Six months. So if you get any of these programs, right, you don't have to worry about paying these particular fees for six months, okay? So here's my two things, one more time. Apply, appeal, apply, appeal. So now let me just tell you about us, the SBDC. I haven't said anything about us. The SBDC is a national organization. What we do is we help entrepreneurs like yourself. We offer no cost business advising, okay? And so here's some of the things that we do. We help you with cost cutting strategies. We help you with your cash flow analysis. We help you with forecasting. We help you with putting your loan packages together. We help you with personnel management issues, marketing strategies, market intelligence, e-commerce, exporting, purchasing a business, selling a business. All of these things we do for absolutely no cost. The only thing we ask of you is at the end of the year, a couple times per year, we ask for a survey just to see how we're doing so that we can continue to get funded by the SBA and other stakeholders, okay? So here in Washington, actually this is a national organization, so they have them in every state. But here in Washington, we have 29 offices, right? So my office is in Tukwila, and I also go to Seattle sometimes and also Redmond. But we have 29 offices and 32 certified business advisors, okay? So let me end my slideshow and answer your questions. Any questions? Jennifer Ness, we have one that's been on the chat line. Uh, the first one is from Wendy Cross. She asked, her husband applied for the 1099 benefits with Wells Fargo because he had an account there. Is there a better place to apply? No place is better than the other one because guess what's happening? This is a great question and thank you for asking that. Here, this is what's happening. The SBA is buying these loans as soon as the banks are uh, extending them. Because what they wanna do is they wanna make sure the bank has more money to extend to the next folks. So these loans are being bought by the SBA and they have the exact same terms everywhere you go. So it is gonna be up to the lender when it comes to the forgivable portion. So they need to know what you've spent the money for, right? And so SBA is buying the loans. No loan is better than the other. Some of them may have more available to lend at that time, but eventually they'll all have it to lend. Ain't none of us in a super huge rush, right? I mean, some of us are, so I shouldn't say that, sorry. But <laughs> none of these banks are better than the other. Go to the bank where you already have a relationship because that's gonna get you that speedy response. I, I was on a panel like this earlier, um, no, it's actually last week with Seattle Credit Union. They said they're, they're made, giving these a priority and they're approving them in two days. You'll have the money in your bank account within three days. So that's the credit unions that's doing that. But other banks are doing that as well. So none of them are better than the other. I don't recommend any. If your bank is not doing the payment protection program, Washington Federal Bank is. So they're doing it for clients who are not their existing client. Okay. So that's one bank that I know for sure because I had a client who did it just yesterday. And she actually got approved today. And she said the process was amazing. Like she had nothing but great things to say about them. And I'm like, thank you for that. Cause I can share that with someone else, right? So if your bank is not doing it today, go to Washington Fed or go back to them tomorrow because the SBA is buying those loans up as soon as they're out there. All right, next question. Let's go to BJ Stewart who has a question. He's gonna My unmute question his was, uh, what happens uh, when or if the money runs out on uh, either the auto program or the PPP program? So what happens if the money runs out? So I don't, 
think the money is going to run out because guess what's going to happen? They're just going to keep purchasing these loans to make them more available. What I will say is the PPP program is only available through June 30th. So you need to take advantage of it ASAP. What did I say? Apply appeal. So take advantage of it as soon as possible because that eight weeks start as soon as you get that money. Okay. So I don't think the money's going to run out. I'm not an expert, but I don't think the money's going to run out. All right. Let's see. Cause, are you on the line? Cause Roberts? If you are, unmute. I saw a question on there. Yeah, I got it from Cause. Okay. Uh, I'll ask for Cause. Cause says, can you use the $10,000 to pay on credit card debt to lower your interest rate and delay short-term payments? So... They are saying they do not want you to pay on long-term debt. Credit card is long-term debt, but they did say line of credit. So I would clarify that with your bank, okay? Because I don't want to give you any misinformation. I want you to clarify it with your banker and say, hey, what else can I use this loan for? What I will say is in order for it to be forgivable, I would tell you, no, use it for what they say to use it for. Don't have any ambiguities because if you have to pay that money back because you chose to use it for something that wasn't on that list and somebody told you it was okay, that's really not the smart thing to do. Use it for what they tell you to use it for, your payroll, your mortgage, your rent, your utilities. Otherwise, use other money. Forget about it, okay? So that's just my opinion. Next question. Jennifer Ness, thank you so much. On Facebook Live, Karen Zim asks, can you apply as a sole proprietor in the gig economy? I just get so excited because nothing else would have been available to us, right? As gig economy people. Tell her I said, absolutely. The answer is yes. Okay. So regardless, if you are, if you are a babysitter, if you are a massage therapist, if you're an Uber or Lyft driver, if you are a home health aide and you're, you're receiving 1099, whatever you're receiving 1099 for, you can apply. So the answer is yes. Again, don't disqualify yourself. Well, I think you're probably going to know here the answer to this. But Kimberly asks, my business is 90% online, but I rent a commercial kitchen, no actual shop. What do I or what am I eligible for funding? She's eligible for both. So Kimberly, go and apply for the economic injury disaster loan. Go and apply for the payment protection program. Apply for both. Excellent. Uh, Heidi Hall, of course, asks, what about the restaurants that had to lay off workers? Can they participate in the PPP? Okay, so I was just on a call earlier today with all the restaurants at the airport. And one of the things that I found out, because I had to do a little bit of research, they can absolutely apply. Right. And right now, if you're a non-essential business, it doesn't make sense for you to get that money because your eight weeks start as soon as you get it. So the, the, the suggestion that I have is wait until you know you're going to be open. Right. Because as soon as you sign on the line and you have 10 days to sign. So from the time you're approved, you have exactly 10 days to sign and actually accept that money. And as soon as that money gets into your account, that's when your eight weeks start. So for folks that are not still business workers and, and people like that who are not back in business or not back working yet, you may want to wait until you are so that you, your eight weeks start when you actually have employees. Otherwise, you may have employees for four weeks and the rest of that is not forgivable. You want the maximum amount to be forgivable. Okay? You may want to wait until you become an essential business again or until you're up and running. So, but great question. Let's go to the audience here. So if live audience, if you have a question, either raise your hand or unmute your uh, microphone and say your name. Well, Jennifer Ness, if we do not get another uh, amazing question, as always, your presentations are jam packed. And if you're only going to remember two things, you're probably going to figure out what Jennifer Ness, what are those two things? Two things, okay? Throw your fingers up, okay? Two things. I like it. Who is that? Kimberly. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, BJ. Thank you, John. Two things. Apply and appeal. Do not disqualify yourself and don't take no for an answer. Apply, appeal. All right? 
And I'm sorry. We'll have our contact information. If you have additional questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, you'll get this presentation. Our contact information is in there, and BJ will make sure make sure that you have typed your email address, whether you're on Facebook Live or whether you're on this Zoom call. We need your email address because we didn't require anybody to register in advance. Perfect. Let's see. Did we have one other question? I did hear a voice. If you want to ask a question, then mute. Yes, you answered it, and it was a great presentation. Thank you. Um, but yeah, we just wanted to know how we could be in contact with you to make sure that we stay in contact. That was great. Thank you. All right. I'm going to type my email address in here right now, just in case um, you guys need it or want it. But it's Jennifer Ness. I have a pretty amazing name, just in case you didn't know. But Jennifer Ness at WSU.edu. All right. Jennifer at wsu.edu. So there's my email and happy to answer any questions or assist in any way I can. Jennifer Ness, we got one last question. Um, yeah. <laughs> Here it comes, right? Is the maximum on the PPP a maximum of 100,000 divided by 12 months? Or a oh, 2, 2. great How's question. Great. So what I'm looking for is the maximum amount per um, salary. So they're capping at $100,000. So if you make $250,000, they are capping each salary. So if you have 10 employees, right, and they each make $250,000, they're not going to take care of that entire salary. They're capping the salaries at $100,000. And what they're doing is they're taking a 12-month period, the average salary in 12 months that's at, uh, at or above, I'm sorry, at or below $100,000, Dividing that by 12 and then multiplying it by 2.5. And that's the amount of the loan that you'll receive. Okay. So that's where that $100,000 amount came from. It's the cap on the salary. So if you make more than that, that's all they're going to go ahead and, and help you with. Okay. So <laughs> if you make $350,000, you blessed. <laughs> Hashtag blessed, right, Jennifer Ness? Hashtag blessed, yes. All right, Jennifer Ness, thank you so much. You continue to you're blow welcome. it up here on the internet. Uh, you not only broke the internet during your session, you have uh, tons of heart and uh, thumbs up. So for those of you in the room, put your hands up. Let's give the Jennifer Ness a huge round of applause. Thank you so much. I appreciate much. it. Thank you all so much. I'm always here to help. Thank you. Let's give it back to Curtis. Curtis is going to introduce our amazing next speaker. Our amazing next speaker. We all wouldn't be here tonight if it wasn't for him. I got a call about a little over a week and a half ago, and he said, what would Black Dot think about partnering with the Urban Impact and putting this event together? I said, we'd be all for it. And he put everything together. He created a Zoom. He talked to the speakers and presenters and sent out the emails. So we're all here tonight for BJ Armstrong, uh, all of his hard work and his vision. And uh, he's uh, B.J. Armstrong. I get you confused with the guy from the Chicago Bulls. B.J. Stewart, my bad. <laughs> B.J. Stewart from Urban Impact. And he's going to be sharing with you some operations and management things to be able to help you get through this crisis. All right. Thank you, Curtis. Uh, of course. You know, you, I'm a Detroit Pistons fan at that point. <laughs> My bad, man. My bad. <laughs> yeah. I'm a Sonics fan. I'm just going to leave it up with that. Yeah, but uh, B.J. Stewart. And now my first name is Apply. And my last name is Appeal. So, you know, just, just uh, informally, just between me and the, the 50 folks or so that are, that are participating tonight. Um, and, you know, thank you, Jennifer Ness, for that encouragement, that, uh, you know, to basically two-word encouragement, because, you know, our objective here is not only to inform, but really to engage and empower you all to act. Because one of the things that we uh, recognize is that, uh, the folks on this uh, call and on uh, Facebook Live tonight are most likely some of the more difficult folks to, to, to reach relative to information. So we want to make sure that you, one, have the information. And two, we want to be there to support you, to empower you, to act. Because at the end of the day, you have to, you know, get out your laptop and type in, spend that 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever, applying for uh, uh, these resources. Because if you don't apply, if you don't put your uh, name in a hat, you're gonna get left behind. I read a recent Forbes article that indicated um, that this is a one in a lifetime opportunity to, uh, for small businesses. And I'm ta not talking about you know, uh, a small business as in $50 million in sales type business. 
but small mom and pop businesses like uh, you own and that I own to get resources. So, I hear some, uh, yeah, thank you. So, um, I'm going to switch over to uh, my deck here. Okay, can you guys see that okay? All right, so uh, I'm going to uh, talk about what we can do operationally. And if I were to give, provide three tips relative to something that you can do to um, uh, operationally to survive COVID-13 and to, um, you know, really uh, put yourself in a position to thrive beyond this thing is to manage your money. Tip number one. Tip number two, manage the money. Tip number three, manage your money. Managing cash flow is the most critical thing that you can do, and it requires immediate action. It requires you to, you know, once you get off this call, part of our objective here tonight is for you to leave with an individual action plan around the information that we presented here this evening and act. Right, and there, there are things you can do tonight, there's things you can do tomorrow, but be in action, right? So um, one of the things that we wanna really encourage you to do is to, to communicate, 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 communicate. And that starts with your employees. Your employees are your biggest um, uh, asset and you need to keep your employees in the loop and you do that by uh, uh, talking with them, making sure that they are up to date relative to the uh, health and safety requirements and guidelines, which not only protects them, but protects your, uh, your customers as well. Um, ask if any of them are willing to uh, reduce their hours volunteer voluntarily, because you may be surprised relative to um, the answers that uh, you get back. And, and uh, encourage the use of technology to increase productivity. You know, who would have thought that um, a technology like Zoom would uh, uh, really be an infrastructure platform that almost all of us are using in our in our day to day work. So uh, make sure that you utilize technology to maintain or even increase some level of productivity amongst your employees. And then you know set up the work from home um, uh, functionality. In many cases, that's going to require a laptop, a Wi-Fi, and a Google Suite. And with those three things you can you know, pretty, get pretty close to replicating you know, your uh, in-office functionality. Now, for those of you who don't happen to be in office environment, it's gonna be uh, tough, but uh, nonetheless, um, be in contact with uh, your employees, communicate with your employees. Second point I wanna make here is to talk to your industry colleagues. You know, share the information. Information is power. That's, that's part of what we're uh, looking to accomplish tonight. Make sure that you have information in hand. Make sure that you act on that information and then share that information with your network, share that information with your family, friends, and neighbor, and also encourage them to, to act as well. I also want to encourage you to communicate to your customers. Bottom line is your customer needs have changed. Needs have changed for your customers. So you need to understand what those needs are. You need to understand what their problems are. You need to understand what their desires are. So then you can pivot and adapt um, your products and services to solve those problems and to satisfy those needs and desires. And there are gonna be new opportunities out there uh, too. So with those, uh, uh, with change, uh, with something like uh, the phenomena that COVID-19 has uh, presented us, that's gonna present a new slate of problems it's going to create a new uh, a slate of needs and desires. So you need to adapt and pivot uh, your products and opportunities to meet those changing problems, needs, and, and desires. And you know, utilize technology to uh, reach out to your customer. That might look like social media. That might look like um, other digital platforms like Zooms, conducting webinars, et cetera. But the point is to engage and even attract new customers during this point in time. So uh, managing your cash, you know, what I recommend, because we really don't have a clear line of sight in terms of how long this thing is going to last. So uh, create a three month cash uh, plan so that you can forecast and estimate your cash needs 
over the next 30 days, over the next 60 days, over the next 90 days. Because even if the governor lifts the um, stay at home re requirement beyond the current May 4th um, uh, uh, date, you know, it's not like the economy is going to uh, turn on like a flashlight. You really need to have a plan in place that enables you to ramp up as the economy uh, uh, ramps back up and gets back online. And uh, the first point I want to make relative to this three month cash plan is to folks get your money. You earned it, um, and it's uh, it's your money. It's your money to uh, be had. So go get it. And what do I mean by go get it? Invoice immediately for all services and sales that you've completed, and then go after and collect those receivables as, as, as soon as possible. So uh, point number one, get your money, right? Um, we've talked a little bit already about um, deferring significant um, uh, uh, pay, uh, payments. That can uh, be a mortgage <clears throat> where you uh, dial up your mortgage company and say, hey, I'm in a tight situation. Can you defer my uh, mortgage for uh, mortgage payments for 90 to 120 days? My organization, Urban Impact, uh, did this with our mortgage holder, and they granted us a they granted us a, a, a 120 day uh, deferral, and we were able to then negotiate uh, them extending our term out. Now, be careful. Note that I said defer. I did not say forgive. And one of the things when you, in particular, when you're talking uh, or dealing with mortgages, you could end up, they, uh, a lot of these banks, a lot of these mortgage companies will defer payment, but at the end of that deferment period, maybe 90 days or 120 days, you could have this big balloon payment at, at the end of that. Well, you, you want to try to negotiate yourself uh, uh, out of that. Uh, what you want to do is to negotiate uh, or renegotiate the term of your mortgage, uh, which is basically a, a requesting a mortgage, um, um, uh, a, a, a mortgage, uh, I can't remember the term right now, it'll come to me here uh, momentarily, but uh, negotiate with your mortgage company to extend that deferment period to the end of your uh, mortgage, right? So you avoid this significant balloon payment. Um, do the same thing for rents. Now, landlords can be a, a little bit uh, tougher, but nonetheless, if you don't ask, guess what? You're not going to, to get. So look to defer mortgage payments and rent payments. And when I mean defer, I simply mean delay payments of, of those things. Um, defer your utility payments. Uh, uh, Heidi Hall earlier in the presentation mentioned the, uh, uh, the C city of Seattle utility uh, companies working with customers, working out payment plans, working out budget plans. So make sure to be in contact with your uh, utility company to uh, work out those deferment and negotiate those, those payments. Um, managing your staff. This is probably going to be the, the second significant cost uh, once you get beyond your facility costs and, and utilities, and that's your, your labor. You know, the bottom line is you need to be, you know, brutally honest with, with yourself and determine your minimum staffing needs and then make the appropriate personnel decisions that meet your unique cash situation. And, um, you know, that could mean, you know, laying off some of your employees. That could mean reduced um, um, uh, salaries. Um, so if you, if you need to manage cash by reducing payroll, you need to manage cash by reducing payroll. That's just one of the you know tough things about this um, you know particular phenomenon. What I will encourage you, however, is if you do end up laying uh, off your uh, employees or some of your employees, make sure that you connect them uh, with the appropriate um, uh, resources. Right, and Heidi uh, shared some of that information earlier, and that contact information will be included. Uh, in the uh, this presentation that we'll share out. The uh, third point here is to assess all your fixed costs, right? Those fixed costs uh, can range from mortgage payments, rent, insurance, uh, debt service, uh, utilities, because at the end of the day, folks, if you add up your um, fixed costs, and those are the costs that go that don't go away, whether you have sales or not, 
you know, it, it could be better to temporarily shut down your, your uh, business such that uh, it doesn't drain all your cash. You know, I can't recommend you do that, but you need to look at your um, uh, own unique understanding, uh, your own unique situation, understand your fixed costs, minimize all the costs that you can, and then make a decision for yourself. Uh, negotiate with, with your vendors, your vendors, delaying payments and finding other ways to, to reduce costs. Uh, Urban Impact has, um, uh, we had a big uh, renewal of one of our uh, software systems and it was a significant uh, outpouring of cash. I got online, said, hey, we're in a tough spot. We need to conserve cash. Can we delay payment on this renewal for, uh, I asked for 120 days, but they gave us 90 days. Right, so that 90 days really creates um, a flexibility such that you can, you know, um, uh, pay things in in the short term, understanding you're going to have that that 90 day payment. So uh, talk to your uh, vendors and you know negotiate uh, with them. Um, alter payments uh, to creditors. We talked about that uh, uh, a little bit, um, and uh, negotiate with them. Uh, call them on the phone and explain your situation and many of them most of them will work with you because they understand uh what's going what's going on right the thing that you don't want to do is just ignore your your debt situation right take a look, look at your debt load and explore a debt restructure decreasing your your payments if you are in um uh, that type of a situation and the last point i want to make here on, on this slide is to minimize your expenses to the bare bones. I used to work for an organization that called the, the, the approach scorched earth, right? So don't spend any money unless you absolutely need it for the business's survival. And even when it comes to inventory purchases, make sure that the purchase of inventory is limited to the sales that you um, already have in hand or that you know that you're going to uh, churn or to turn, I should say. Um, Heidi earlier talked about the uh, city's B&O tax. I know there's some, uh, at the state level, there's some uh, uh, LNI tax deferments, even some property tax uh, deferments. Uh, many of these thing, things require um, uh, some form, form of request through the taxing entity. So make sure that you just um, don't ignore uh, the, you know, kind of self-defer, make sure you contact the city or the state or the county and request the deferral of um, be it property taxes, L&I, or, or B&O. Now, one thing you don't want to ignore in that where there is, isn't a break on are federal payroll taxes. You have to file on time and you have to pay on time, just, just like as if COVID never happened, right? So no break on federal payroll taxes. Um, and then there's a couple of uh, uh, links here in terms of seeking uh, emergency relief uh, from a, a tax perspective, both at a federal and state level. So uh, these will be in the presentation and that information will be available for you. You know, uh, I want to talk about adapting and, and pivoting. And the reality is those who adapt and pivot the quickest and adapt and quick as the best are gonna be the ones that will survive and the ones that will thrive beyond this COVID-19 uh, phenomenon. So here's some of the things that uh, uh, you can do. We already talked about setting up work at home arrangements for your em employees. And you know, it's amazing. I've been working from home, I think six weeks now. So, um, uh, so set up work at home arrangements for your employees. Shift your sales activity on online. Uh, Urban Impact has a gym, Rainer Health and Fitness, and Rainer Health and Fitness in about a week reinvented itself by taking all of this programming to uh, online. So all of our training classes are, are, are online. All of our personal training are, is online. All of our group classes are online. Take advantage of technology, shift your sales activity, shift your programming to, um, to online. Uh, and then that's another way to engage with your, with your customers, uh, excuse me, engage, engage with your customers as well. That might look like a Zoominar, a webinar on Zoom. 
that might look like extending uh, discounts to your customers to keep them engaged. That might look like selling gift cards. Because think about it this way, to the extent that you're able to sell a gift card, a $25 gift card, or a $50 gift card, or a $100 gift card to your customers, that's like them issuing you a little mini loan, right? So they're giving you uh, money now for something, some product or service that will be delivered at a later time. So really uh, consider adapting and pivoting by selling uh, discount cards and, and um, gift cards. Um, trial a new product or service. I was uh, talking with uh, uh, Monica Matthew uh, today with uh, Queen Care. She has a um, storefront in Columbia City and uh, she sells uh, facial uh, uh, products, health and beauty aid products. And uh, she realized that um, uh, nobody could find sanitizer. Guess what she did? She created a sanitizer as a product line and is selling that through her e-commerce site. So uh, make sure that you adapt and pivot to meet the uh, needs and desires of your customers and to solve their problems. BJ, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. These are some of the business we coaches, but wait a minute. Didn't she tell you that her sales are actually greater than pre-corona? That's, uh, that's true. And uh, that's, that's a great lead in, John, to this next slide here where, you know, we need to have an abundant, abundance mentality. We need to have a, a mentality of positivity and really prepare to thrive post-corona, uh, uh, prepare to thrive uh, post-COVID-19. And, you know, Monica is a good example of how uh, she was preparing to take more and more of her business on, uh, online and uh, the, through e-commerce even before this COVID-19 phenomena. Um, but it really, you know, it kind, of, kind of pushed her, gave her momentum to do, um, to move in that direction. And her sales, she actually experienced a sales increase a sales increase during this period of time. So I don't know how many folks can, uh, can say that. So uh, I just want to encourage you to invest in your online presence. That might look like uh, an enhanced website. That might look like enhanced e-commerce capability. Uh, it could look like enhancing your, your social media platform as a means to engage with your customers and to, uh, and to conduct business. BJ, do you mind if I share a story? Sure, absolutely. Uh, I teach team building and normally it's face to face. Remember when we used to meet together and we could touch each other? Well, uh, I had 12 programs canceled or postponed. And for me, I'm not a big business. That's a lot of revenue. But sometimes this coronavirus can give you a gift. See this book up here? I wrote that uh, eight years ago. My publisher called me and says, hey, would you like to rewrite that book? You know what I told him, BJ? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> apply. I told him to apply and appeal. That's what I told him. Yeah. Yeah. So I got a deal to rewrite this book. And I can tell you, uh, hopefully as of tomorrow, I will have replaced and exceeded the amount of income I've lost from coronavirus. You can do it. You can do it. And it's, Thank adapting, you. it's adapting. It's pivoting. It's understanding the problems, needs, and desires of your customers and solving those problems and satisfying those needs and, and desires. And that's gonna require revisiting your business plan, revisiting your strategic plan, because the bottom line is life post COVID-19 is gonna be different than, than it was even just a few weeks ago. So uh, uh, there's gonna be a need to uh, adapt and, and visit and pivot um, based on those changed realities. And last point I want to, uh, to make here on this slide is to take care of yourself. Some self-care. And, you know, I, I got to admit that I haven't been doing a very good job of that here the first two days of, of this uh, week as I've been, you know, sitting at my home office and, you know, uh, spending much of my day on, on Zoom calls. Um, uh, but take care of yourself because the most um, precious asset is, is yourself and, and your family. So you need to take care of yourself. That might be, you know, a walk um, with your significant other. That might be some meditation or prayer time in the morning when you wake up or in the evening just before you go to bed. That might be taking, you know, getting out of your, your seat after sitting all day and, and stretching to make sure that you keep your, your ligaments um, uh, uh, loose. So at any rate, 
take care of your uh, take care of yourself, right? Uh, PJ, we are John, getting ready for breakout rooms, just so you know, whenever you're ready. Yep. yep. So uh, I don't know if there's any questions. Do we have a time for a question or two? I don't see any questions as of the moment. Hello? Hello? Oh, here we go. Uh, go yeah. ahead, say your name. Yeah, this is Abdi. BJ, thank you. Uh, this is uh, a great presentation. Uh, thanks to the other presenters. Abdi, how are you? Good. How are you, BJ? Excellent. Yeah, yeah I appreciate your, um, your thoughtful um, explanation, all the slides, and cash flow is a very important part of post-COVID-19 strategy. One thing I want to just add, uh, I think that's important is uh, we are small business owners. Even some of us probably were struggling or life support before this whole thing is starting, right? So I know the appeal, the apply and appeal, uh, probably is it's towards like the free money, the grant money. But I think what I think one of the things we need to keep in mind is to look at our financial situation, look at our cash flow, and and not rush into getting into a loan if you are struggling with to begin with. Before you even I had a client who was planning to close shop in July, and he was planning before the whole thing started. So. Don't just get into debt because it's appealing because it's 3.75, it's 30 years. You know, you have to pay it back at some point. So if you don't need that particular loan, just take advantage of the free, uh, the grant money up to the 10,000 and this payroll program protection, which can be forgiven, but just have strategy before you get into uh, another debt and, and actually, uh, look into your cash flow or portfolio and assess as cash as, as uh, BJ explained uh, very um, eloquently. So I just want to make that comment. Uh, Abdi, um, uh, do me a favor. Um, just real brief, uh, introduce your uh, folks to to yourself. Uh, Abdi is a, a CPA, and if you uh, in at the end of that introduction, um, uh, for sure, if you could type your contact information in the uh, uh, chat so it's just that folks can contact you if, if, if necessary. But, but you know, beyond kind of the tips that I've given from a cash flow uh, management perspective, are there any other key points that, that you would bring up? No, this, I think you covered everything. I just want to throw out that particular um, point that, you know, people, we all, you know, are small businesses and we don't have a lot of cash in our hands. We might be already in a debt. So we just want to make sure we're not getting more debt if we don't have to. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll, I'll throw, um, yeah, I think some of the folks already um, uh, know me, but my name is Abdi Mohammed. I'm the owner of Garabay Financial Solutions. I'm a CPA providing accounting and tax services uh, to not-for-profits and business, small business owners. And I work with BJ, Kurz, Jennifer. Ness. So, um, I'm, I'm glad to be on this call and just, you know, learn all of these so I can pass on to my clients as well. So thank you. And for me as well, so. John, any additional questions out there? No, I think we're good. Uh, I think this is a perfect time to move to breakouts. Do you have any instructions and then I can give final instructions? Curtis? Uh, could you post that slide one more time of the action plan so people can uh, get an idea of what we're about to do. I, if you haven't you. already, grab a piece of paper, a pen, or open up another screen on your computer or phone and be able to uh, write these things down. We're going to create a real quick action plan based on the uh, three great presentations that we heard from Heidi, Jennifer, Finesse, and BJ. So here's what it looks like. We want you to put action items over here on the left column. Who uh, is going to execute that and what that looks like? And then a due date. We always want a due date because we want to make sure we're working towards something. If we just leave it hanging out there, we might not get to it. So try to prioritize it. Once you get them down, just brainstorm, get them down in that left-hand column, and then prioritize them, maybe one, two, three, four, however many you can get in there. And then we want you to have a discussion in the groups, the chat rooms that we put you in, have a discussion of how that looks and maybe get some advice from some other people in the room, get some feedback. And then also share feedback when it's their turn. So maybe we can put three people in a room, maybe each person take three minutes 
over the next 10 minutes and then we'll come back and share overall as a group. Does anybody have any questions before we go into the individual breakout rooms? Clear on the, what we're doing? Excellent. I'm just going to restate, Curtis, in case people didn't get that. What you're doing right now is make an action plan, and I have arranged the breakout group so that there is a key speaker in each of the breakout rooms. You can personally ask them questions, but most importantly, BJ says, take action. Do not just pass this video by. You want to apply an appeal, and you can hear this from each of the people. Your breakout room will have uh, four people plus a leader and you will have nine plus one minutes. At nine minutes, I will break the room up and a 60 second timer will start to count down. We will come here and make sure you have one person in your room ready to report out in about 30 seconds or less, and we will close up for the night. Is that good, Curtis? That's great. All right, so count down three, two, one, Curtis, and I'm gonna push the button. Three, two, and one. Go to your breakout rooms, we'll see you there. Hey, Troy, hey, and this is, introduce you to my sister, Anne, Jennifer Ness. Hey. Hey, I just want to introduce you to someone special, Jennifer Ness. One, that's Troy. I don't know if you know Troy personally, but over here, that's my sister, Annie Chan from Oregon. Oh, awesome. Hey, Annie. Hey, hey where, where are you located? I'm in um, Washington right now. I'm at my friend's house in Roy, Washington, which is our country, country living. <laughs> okay, how much time do we have for this breakout? You have 10 have minutes, minutes, nine plus one. And is everybody going or who, how many people are going? I guess you and Troy. You and Troy need to let us know from that, from all the information that you got today, how are you going to implement it? What is your strategy and how can we hold you accountable to that? Well, I jumped on late because I registered late and I couldn't find the link and John said it's streaming on my Facebook and then I clicked the Zoom link. So I showed up after all the speakers were done. But Troy's gonna go first because I kind of do have a strategy, but I will I will I will modify my I'll put my answers based on what I can follow along. I'm I'm a quick set. So Troy, okay. you start. Um, oh and just so y'all know our our feed is the one that's live on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> No kidding. Are you serious? Yeah. Yes, yes I'm was. so serious. Oh, wow. So serious. All right, go ahead, Troy. Okay. With all this... your business savvy and sense. Hey, repeat the question because I want to make sure I just answer it pointedly. Sure. Um, the question is, we are developing a strategy in this small group, understanding what things you take from this presentation, what you're going to implement in your business, and when will that be done, and how can we hold you accountable? Yeah, um, I think for me, I'm just reassessing, making sure that I understand, you know, what the the EIDL uh, loan is, and um, and then the and then the PPP, just making sure that I get everything in that they need on a real quick and timely basis. You know, um, I'm running lean and mean right now, but I I think I'm good pretty pretty much. Um, just making sure that I respond really promptly on when, when they request for anything. Um, well, and what's your business, Troy? Uh, financial planning. So I help people who are trying to navigate through this uh, very unique market that we're in right now. And I help people in different, different um, areas of that spectrum. Either they're just starting out and they're like, hey, wow, this looks like a great opportunity. Where should I be? Or it could be, I'm retired and man, should I pull out? What should I do? How do I get a predictable and sustainable income? Or it could be estate planning. It really just depends on the individual, but uh, personal financial planning is kind of where I, I stay. I do business um, uh, retirement plans as well, but I really like helping people, individuals. I just want to reiterate something that Abdi said, which I thought was really key and I should have said it earlier. And I thank him for always having my back. I do love Abdi for that. But what he said was, if your business is already in trouble, don't take on additional debt. You know, for those of us who were already struggling, additional debt is just going to make you struggle even more. I've seen that. I've seen it play out, you know, in different businesses and different scenarios. But what I will say is 
this is also a great opportunity. So for those businesses that may not have been struggling or may have been struggling because of capital infusion, you know, that's a huge reason why a lot of businesses fail because they don't have the money to actually grow. So um, for you, Troy, I think what you say, you're, you're running a lean operation right now. It may be a great time for you to take advantage of PPP because you'll have eight weeks to kind of ramp up your staff and have all of that forgiven for those eight weeks, you know? And then you make a determination after that to say, huh. That was probably worth it, or you know what? It, that wasn't worth it. So go on, go on. Sorry about that. Hold on one second. What happened? Ah, uh, that was Zoom. That is not another caller. I'm looking at the participant list. That's what happened to you, Jenna Finesse. You, you broke the internet twice today. <laughs> Jeez. I'm used okay. to that. Continue. No, go ahead. I want to hear from Annie. Yeah, yeah. So I have a skincare company. Um, I'm a solopreneur. I have two treatment rooms and I had a subletter. So my expenses were already in half. So I've been closed ever since Oregon, where I am, is, has been shut down. And uh, this year was interesting because I feel like the universe is saying, do my strategy even more. So um, I'm 57, I'm retirement ready. Uh, last, the last year I traveled a lot and I said, well, I wanna do some of that some more, but because I do services, I'm like tied to, when I have an appointment, a client appointment, I have to be there. So I wanted to pivot this year and focus on products. Well, guess what? It just happens to work so much better with COVID-19 to do less services and more products. Mm -hmm. Anyway, then another thing happened at the beginning of this year, my landlord said, oh, you need to go find a new lease. Your lease is ending June 30th because we're going to build 15 condos here. So anyway, with COVID-19, my thinking is that it will not really be safe for me to be one-on-one -on -one and have my hands all over them and have my face close to their face until we have a vaccine, an antibody, or a cure. And so I'm gonna say, okay, let's just say that's 18 months. Vaccine is the way we normally fight viruses. So uh, right now, the reason why I was late, I am selling all of my um, ex excess furniture. I sold a washer and dryer. I like sold all this stuff today. I sold an extra refrigerator. I sold a massage table. I just like went that and- sounds I like income to me, baby. Yeah, so, so far, I, I sold not quite everything, but the bulk of it, and I made like uh, $21.30. I, mean, I made over $2,000. Wow, that sounds yeah. like income. That goes straight on the income sheet. Yeah. Well, awesome. So as far as, as, far as your, your objectives, your goals, you know, for the next 18 months, I know that's a long period of time, so let's yeah. just back that up into 30 days. What yeah. can you do in the next 30 days to maximize your efforts for during COVID-19? Well, right now, between now and a week from Saturday, I have to remodel my back room to comply with Oregon Board of Cosmetology standards, which means I'm going to lay new flooring and install a sink and hire a plumber to, there's plumbing there, but like the spigots and everything have to be added. Then I'm, I'm going to hire a trade. I'm going to rent a U-Haul and I'm going to move all the stuff out. And two people who bought stuff, I'm going to deliver it on Saturday, the 20th. Then I'm going to put all the stuff that go, that's already in my treatment room, in my back room. Any excess will go in my garage and I'm going to continue to sell that. So that's pretty busy. That is pretty I've applied, busy. I've applied for unemployment. And so that should be 12 twelve hundred and thirty eight dollars a week once once we get approved um but like they're so backed up and they don't know what to do with us self-employed even though i know it's gonna don't catch up but anybody who has a cash flow problem has a big problem now but i'm good plus All right, what about you wendy i see you joined us how yeah. are you 90 seconds you're muted uh -oh. You're on mute. Oh, give her the sign, right? Give her the Hello. sign, John. <laughs> you know. hey. So I'm not a small business owner, but this is fantastic, actually, because my husband just poked his head in 
and he is kind of he's a 1099 he's a process server Perfect. and he uh, applied for the um grant or the small loan through wells fargo but he also applied for unemployment and he right. poked his head in and just said for a second and he said i don't think i can be on unemployment and get that as well and i said don't i said if i'm learning something through this i said don't assume anything yes you better tell him wendy <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's the takeaway so, so pick a present well, I've heard a lot of people on YouTube and I said, no, no, no. I said, you just have to go through the motions. Just go through everything as if everything's fine. Yes. I love right? it. You're right. You're absolutely right. 30 seconds. So as, far, right. as far as you know, do you know if there's a, a restriction for that? There is not. So basically he can apply for all of those things. What happens is once he gets off unemployment, that's when his payroll starts, right? So he can't, he cannot use them both at the same time, of course. Once right. he gets that money, he stops applying for unemployment. Once he, it's because he doesn't have the money yet, he can start to get unemployment. And then it becomes retroactive. Like Annie said, you know, it's taken a while for independent contractors, but it. All right, uh, Curtis, or you want to wrap it up, Curtis? I, actually, I got some, uh, I think we can do some report outs and then do yeah, some yeah. wrap it up with Curtis. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic breakout. I really hope that you guys had some great uh, presentations in there. Uh, actually, we're going to start with you, BJ. So is it you or somebody in your group you'd like to report out? Try and do it in about 30 seconds, please. Sure. Simon, why don't you give a quick readout relative to your, uh, I think it's an exciting opportunity that you have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> The action item that I have is to identify what post-COVID-19 is going to look like for people and the opportunities I have that uh, I can use to support small businesses. I'm sorry for my colleague here. <laughs> hey, don't apologize for any kids. Kids are beautiful. Your executive assistant. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, you know, m my focus right now is to support small businesses and nonprofits become more present online. Um, and so I'm going to identify whether to do that as a solo entrepreneur or as a social venture. Then I'm going to uh, reach out to BJ and Abdi before the end of this week to seek further advice in order for me to make this happen. And I, I, I'd be remiss if I wouldn't uh, bring up, uh, Curtis, the, uh, the uh, Monday Master, Masters and Mastermind. Mastermind. Provide some information on that because that's I'll, another I'll, point of connection, Simon, as well. Yeah, I'll share that information at the end. I want to give everybody a chance and then I'll cover that in the close. That's perfect because we're going to go to breakout room number two, led by our own Curtis Calhoun. Curtis, who's <laughs> going to represent your breakout room? Uh, I guess I can represent. We had uh, Deborah and Daryl in there. Uh, Daryl's going to get on filling out the applications as soon as possible and uh, getting his paperwork in order. And then Deborah, she's already going through BJ's program down there at the Urban Impact. She's going to continue that and then start to develop a business plan and strategy. Oh, look at that. Curtis is the most concise person I've ever met. Thank you so much, Curtis. Thank you for all your work at Black Dot and for helping to organize this. Uh, let's go to uh, breakout room three. Thank you so much for staying extra time, Heidi. I hope that paid off and I really got a chance to have a conversation. Heidi, who's going to share from your room? Um, I, I don't know if anyone wanted to jump in. We didn't quite get that far. I think both of our... Uh, well, Heidi, what are you doing? Yeah, hold on. Well, both of our uh, participants talked about... Um, one's an arts organization and someone else is a hair salon, talked about really adapting to uh, new technology and really using this as an opportunity to, to think about new ways of, of accessing customers and uh, doing storytelling. So really interesting um, the is there. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. oh. Is, and is, as um, we were talking about changing the method, it, it may be that you need to change how you're putting your business out there and how you're doing your business. With me, I can do the art still. I can still have dancers. I can still, as long as I have the um, 
capabilities like like we're doing now the zoom the zoom doesn't hold restrain me as much as it would uh miss jones was in the group with us and she's a hair salon she's at the hair salon got to have hands on so it's we've got to adapt to you know what's happening our future is being changed we've got to adapt just wanted mm-hmm. to say that i have a resource that might be great for you kibibi these are uh, these are new this 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 thing called uh, northwest arts creative hub that uh, i'm in the advisory council for and it would be perfect for what you're describing and you can monetize uh, from it yeah. excellent thank you so much simon uh, let's head to breakout room number four led by urban impacts kristen kristen where are you here you are right here um owner would like to respond i don't know if that's the name or that's just the alias um he would like to report for our group Okay, yeah, ahead. so uh, our group, the, one of the first things we spoke about was just uh, applying and reapplying to all of the uh, government aid out there between either disaster relief, the PPP program, any utilities deferment and b and tax deferment and just any other uh, programs out there that are government or f- federal aided to help with additional cash flow or defer um, payments, you know, down the line to kind of prioritize payments. So that was the first thing we spoke about. Another thing kind of tied into it was just doing an updated cash flow analysis based on our cash flow can help better prioritize our, um, you know, outgoing cash and payables that we, that we have. Um, another thing we spoke about was just, uh, if you're kind of, if you have like a, full-time a part-time job as well as a business trying to make sure you're still going after those government those uh aids for that business to thrive even if it if you feel like it's not an essential business so um those were just a few things that we spoke about and then just being flexible if you're getting no's or you're getting turned down if there's delays and uh, funding, finding other means and, and resources to, uh, you know, get, get what you need for your business to survive. Perfect. Thank you so much. You said music to BJ's ears. You said manage your cash flow. And, you, and, and you, if you don't apply after listening to Jenna Finesse, I don't know how you can do that. All I do is hear her. I did. I, that same night I talked to you last week, I went and applied myself. Like, and I've been, de- I've been delaying, right? I can't delay. Don't disqualify myself. Apply, apply, and appeal. Let's go to our last and most amazing. Well, I don't know. I can't say that. Everybody here is so amazing. But thank you so much for taking your time to speak to us. Uh, breakout Room 5 was managed by Jenna Finesse. Jenna Finesse, who's going to speak for this Breakout Room number 5? I think, uh, I think it should probably be Andy because Wendy came late and Troy is such a gentleman. He's going to let Andy go. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jennifer. All right, let's go to Ann. You're on mute. Bam. <laughs> Wendy uh, was in our breakout room and um, she was going to tell her husband to both apply for the, the payroll protection program and the unemployment and J- Jenna Finesse said, oh, if you're not working, you use one. Once you start working, you use the other. So do both, which I thought was great. And Troy is going to stay on his plan of applying for his aid. And Jenna Finesse did say, be careful about taking on too much debt, but make sure that you have the resources you need to grow. And I am pivoting by focusing on products instead of services for skincare. And um, I'm moving my business into my home. Gigi, and you have six seconds. All right, let's give Anna a round of applause. And most of all, put your hands up and give all of our breakout rooms, plus the facilitators, a huge round of applause. What a great opportunity to have a small conversation with somebody who's an expert. I can tell you, I have a small business. I've been in business for 23 years, and it is difficult to navigate a map that doesn't exist. So thank for you for each of you for showing us part of the way Uh, even if you think you know the way you really need to talk to one of these people and stay connected with them. When you get the slide deck, a lot of their converse, uh, their connection information is in there. There is a lot of resources that's in there. 
So make an action plan. Now I'm just going to give it back to our main man, Curtis Calhoun, who's going to take us home. Take it away, Curtis. Uh, well, I want to give BJ an opportunity to mention Sharks at the Beach before I close us out. Go. Oh, sure. yes. Go ahead, BJ. Sure. Thank you, Curtis. Um, uh, mark your calendar. Save this date, June 18th at the New Holly Gathering Hall. We'll, uh, Urban Impact presents our seventh annual Sharks at the Beach pitch event. And Sharks at the Beach um, is a culminating event uh, that supports aspiring entrepreneurs to launch their business ideas and to accelerate their path through uh, to sustainability uh, and growth. This year is our biggest uh, class uh, ever. We have 12 um, uh, entrepreneurs that are looking to either um, uh, grow their very early stage enterprises or to launch their enterprises. So come and hear their pitches. There'll be an opportunity to support them through an audience uh, vote. And it's going to be a phenomenal night for the community to support entrepreneurs that come from the community. So it's a for us, by us event. Sharks at the Beach on June 18th. Great. Thank you, BJ. I appreciate that. And then first, I'd like to thank everybody for being here again. Uh, we really appreciate you sticking around for the whole thing. We thank you for participating in the breakout groups. I just want to uh, kind of reiterate some of the things that were mentioned. Make sure you apply, 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 and then appeal. Uh, manage your cash flow, like BJ said. Uh, I also want to mention a webinar series that we're doing. Let me share my screen here real quick. And we do this uh, Tuesday through Thursday at 4 p.m. Monday, we have a special one, it's a mastermind group that we do every Monday, 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, Jennifer Ness facilitates that group while we're here on Zoom, and uh, she shares uh, educational opportunities for businesses, and then also she uh, is going to cover some things in regards to what we kind of covered tonight. Uh, Tuesdays, we have Abdi Muhammad, who's here on the call as well. Uh, he shares uh, these three Tuesdays, and then uh, Isaiah T. Gresham on Wednesdays, and then Momar Hermestein on Thursdays. And that's 4 p.m. Uh, I can, once we get the emails in the uh, chat, I can send out an uh, email uh, with the links and the connections. So make sure that's another thing I wanted to cover. Make sure that you put your contact information in the chat. Let me stop this share here real quick. Make sure you put your contact information there in the chat. And I think outside of that, that is everything. Does anything, anybody want to share anything before we close out? Just reiterate, if you haven't already done so, to put your name and email in the chat, because that's the gateway to getting the information. And John, can you explain to folks how they can download the chat so they have, have it on their desktops? Is it possible for you to do that? If you are currently in the Zoom now, this chat is full of key information and contacts. If you go to your chat window, you hit the three little dots next to the chat. It says two, and then everyone, and then to the right of that is three buttons. If you click the button and says save chat, bam, it puts it in a folder and you can click show in folder and grab that, uh, grab that info, grab that cash and grab that text and then appeal and apply. I hope you, we have done our best to keep you on time. We are four minutes to the end. Uh, and again, I want to then thank all the speakers because Curtis is going to close us out. Well, I just want to, uh, BJ or whoever's uh, set up the Zoom, can you at the end save the recording and the chat, and then we can send it out to the email list so they can watch this again, and they can I, have the chat. To I get the whole chat. So it does say, I think yeah. the chat, I got cut when I went to breakout rooms, so we will okay. get those chats back. We actually look like we have a few people with questions, so would you okay. like to take a question before we end? Absolutely. Great. Sure. Let's go to Kimberly. Kimberly, go ahead and unmute and ask your question. You got your hand up. Thank you. Kimberly, can you hear me? Let's see if she can unmute her phone. Here she goes. Hi, I can hear you, but I don't know how my hand got up. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a question, Kimberly? I don't. Hi, Curtis. Hi. How are you? Uh, your wife and family. I, I I miss them. We miss you too. Let's go to Deborah I Taylor. I just oh. have a um. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. This is so important for the time, and I applaud you all for you know, giving us this. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Vivi. Let's go to Deborah Taylor. Deborah. Deborah. 
Yeah, Deborah Taylor, do you have a question? Let's see if Deborah Taylor can unmute. She's trying. She was trying to lower her hand. <laughs> here, I think I clicked the unmute. There you go, Deborah. Can you, you hear go. me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Would you like to ask a question? No, I was just fiddling around trying to make sure that my contact information was where it was supposed to be, so I could get all the documentation and include it. Cool. Would you like to say thanks to any of our speakers, Deborah? Oh, absolutely. This is wonderful. I wish that um, I had been able to let more people know, but I'm definitely going to share this with um, several of my business friends that are in business that have employees, especially. So I just want to thank you all. This was great. It helped me a lot in kind of firming up some of my plans that I'm making. So God bless everyone. God bless. Thank you so much, Deborah. All also, right, Curtis. Say oh. Thank you. I want to say thank you to all the facilitators and I, I wish we can have this exact session again because I invited some some people that really needed this and you know I, I feel really supported and, and I'm just grateful. So and Simon Sorry, uh, here I'll add, and then you, BJ. Simon, this is already on my Facebook page. So it's facebook.com slash CEO John Chen. And BJ will have the entire video. It will end yeah, up yeah, in exactly. multiple resources, including Africatown, yeah. Black Dot, yeah. and Urban Impact, I believe. Yeah. BJ, yeah. go ahead. I, I just wanted to acknowledge Anne. Did you have a question, Anne? Yeah, I have a question. Um, I think Jennifer Ness could answer this. Um, I have a lot of people asking about the payroll protection uh, plan. Can you apply? Do you have to have a poor employees to apply for that? So the answer is no. Um, independent contractors can also apply for the payment protection program. So you yourself, um, it can be considered an employee. You don't have to have anybody else working with you or for you to be considered for or to be eligible for the payment protection program. So tell so, them to go and apply. So if I'm an LLC, and I'm a solopreneur, I should apply is what you're saying. Yeah, and actually you can apply for multiple businesses on all of those. That's just something I forgot to mention. But if you have more than one business, I do. you can apply for multiple businesses as well. So that's something that people need to be mindful of. Thank you so much. Hey, it's uh, time out here. So Curtis, uh, why don't you go ahead and give the final words for today for everybody and uh, we'll get a chance to answer any questions. I just want to say thank you again to everybody for showing up and I want to give an extra special thank you to Mr. John Chin, who probably without uh, his help, it would have been a lot more difficult to pull this off. Thank you for all your hard work behind the scenes, John. And you guys have a great evening and look thank forward to the email with all the information in it. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. If you need Thank to Thank you, BJ, Jennifer, Heidi. Thank you. God Anybody bless you all. Anybody who would like to stay and God ask a question, you. you can hang out, but we will.